Welcome everyone to this webinar hosted by Tordex entitled Simple Provisioning and OTA Update of Connected Embedded Linux Devices. We have with us today our guest and partner, Mender. My name is Brandon Shibley. I'm VP of Innovation at Tordex. And from Mender is Drew Mosley, Senior Technical Solutions Architect, who will be presenting the webinar today. Allow me to briefly introduce Toradex. We create system on modules built around ARM system on chips from companies like NXP and NVIDIA. We provide robust, deeply integrated Linux and Windows embedded compact board support packages and other software for these devices, as well as uh, provide free technical support and development resources. These are some numbers to give you a sense of the scale of Toradex. We're 15 years old. Over 3,000 customers, over 100 employees, nine offices, and an extensive partner network. Toradex is global, so feel free to reach out to the nearest office. Suffice it to say, we'll gladly tell you more about Toradex if you'd like to know more. We do direct sales and uh, customer technical support. Our computer modules are embedded in all kinds of products and applications that require industrial grade computing. We specialize in longevity, robustness and ease of use. And finally, these are all the products that we're actively selling into new designs. They are organized into two families, which are Calibri and Apollos. Modules within a family are pin compatible and interchangeable, which provides a high degree of flexibility and scalability. And now allow me to introduce Mender. Mender is a Toradex partner providing software provisioning and over the air software update capabilities to embedded Linux devices, including Toradex products. Embedded devices are increasingly connected and the need to update these devices is paramount. Mender offers both a client and host side software for managing software updates, all of which is open sourced under the Apache 2 license. The customers I've spoken with who have chosen to develop with Mender appreciate the dependability and straightforward integration. Drew will, of course, take you into a deeper dive of this topic, but if you have any questions during the webinar, I urge you to ask your questions in the question dialogue of GoToWebinar, and we will have a Q&A session at the end. Uh, we're also interested to hear your feedback about this webinar. Well, there's a survey that you can fill out at the end, and I encourage you to reach out to either of us to tell us about your projects, requirements, or feature wish lists, and let us know if you're facing any unresolved challenges. A recording of the webinar will be available in the next week or so at toradex.com slash webinars and at YouTube in the Toradex channel. So without further ado, I welcome Drew Mosley of Mender. Very good. Thank you so much, Brandon. Thank you for having me. Thank you for hosting. And uh, thank you, everyone, for attending. Uh, I realize how valuable your time is and really appreciate uh, you taking the time to uh, learn more about our products and, and what we have to offer. Um, as Brandon said, you know, we're here to discuss provisioning of boards and uh, how to perform over-the-air updates, which is the, the bread and butter of our product. Uh, briefly, want to touch on why we have chosen to partner with Toradex. Very similar to what Brandon said, but uh, from our customer's perspective, uh, there's a number of primary reasons to go with Toradex. The, the BSP that, uh, that they provide and maintain that uh, is based on Yocto is extremely well supported and very mature. They have a very active development community that keeps it up to date uh, and has broad range of support for the entire product line. Our reference platform for support of Toradex is the Calibri IMX7. Um, and it is very well supported and, and, and works very well out of the box. They have worked closely with upstream projects, uh, including uh, the U-Boot and uh, Linux communities. And uh, uh, many of their, their modules are directly supported in the upstream repositories, making for a, a very smooth working model with uh, the Yakto system. There are many Toradex contributions that are available in both uh, Yakto and the OE core. Uh, as, as you'll see when you start digging through the source repositories. Uh, and they're, they're, they're known for working well with open source communities, which is very important for our, for our customers. Uh, as Brandon mentioned, our product is uh, open source with the Apache 2 license. So a, a partner that works well in the open 
open source world is uh, very valuable for our customers. Toradex products have been directly recommended to us by several Mender community users. Um, and the wide range of uh, SAW modules with pin compatibility uh, makes it easy for our customers to decide on a module, start working with it, and as their needs change, they can move up or down in functionality based on, on their particular use case. And being able to switch without having to uh, jump through uh, lots of hoops to switch from one chipset to another is very helpful. So why does uh, someone need Mender? So when we started Mender, we, we did quite a bit of research and talked with many device manufacturers, just trying to find out how people were doing updates and, and what the, the common working models were. And it seemed that the, the biggest, uh, by far the biggest solution for deploying over the air updates to the, these uh, types of connected devices were mostly homegrown solutions. Um, and, and while conceptually it's fairly straightforward what needs to be done to deploy an update, you need to have a network channel, you need to, to get the, the, the update down to the device, and you need to deploy it onto a block device somewhere in the system. Uh, but that, that just starts the, the conversation. There's really a lot of features that need to go into it uh, that, that a lot of those homegrown so solutions seem to be missing. Security uh, is a lot of times an afterthought. Uh, the basics are fairly well understood, but there's a lot of tricky uh, uh, corner cases that need to be dealt with. Robustness can, can sometimes be sacrificed for some of these homegrown solutions. Uh, and we'll dig into those two. Those are our two primary uh, uh, focuses for the vendor product. Uh, we'll dig into what those two specifically mean uh, a little bit more later. But the, the management server side of things and the fact that the vendor system is a fully integrated, both the client and server, uh, it, it's a very coherent system. Uh, we think that that gives us a, a, a distinct advantage with our system and, and makes it much easier to use across the, uh, across the entire system. It's also a community-backed system, which to many of our customers and many, many uh, device manufacturers is very important. We do have a, a reasonably active community. Uh, we have several ports that have been contributed by others, as well as feature ideas and other contributions coming in from some of the community members. And, and the one comment that we did hear from many p folks that were developing their own homegrown solution was that the actual development time far exceeded their initial estimates. Most of uh, the gut feeling for many of these developers was that they could uh, throw together something to implement updates in uh, you know, one, two to three weeks. And typically by the time they actually got, a pro got it, the feature set implemented and out the door, it was significantly longer than that. So, that's probably the primary reasons that we, we decided that uh, there was a, a need for a product like Mender out there that device manufacturers could take and integrate into their designs. So who we are, uh, Northern Tech is uh, our corporate entity. Uh, it's the company that, that is backing the, uh, the Mender.io open source project. Uh, we do have a team with uh, fairly extensive experience in the, the, the Linux system uh, world. Uh, at scale with some of the largest enterprises. You see the uh, logos on the screen here to give you an idea of some of the customers we've been dealing with. Um, as far as uh, logistics of where we are, we are uh, a broadly distributed team uh, with offices. Uh, we've got a small office in San Francisco. Our primary development center is in Oslo, Norway. And then we additionally have a few folks that are uh, work from home, uh, such as myself. I'm actually in, the Flor in Florida. So just a brief, just a couple slides here to kind of motivate uh, why we need to do some updates. I think probably the, everybody uh, attending and, and watching this webinar is, is well familiar, but uh, just want to touch on briefly a few statistics and things that, to kind of motivate why we need to update devices in the field. Um, you see the, the quote here from uh, Steve McConnell's book, Code Complete, uh, indicating that there, there, there will be bugs. Uh, one to 25 line, bugs per 1,000 lines of code. That's obviously a broad industry statistic and a pretty wide range uh, of numbers, but uh, the net result of that, is, I think, is pretty clear. Uh, additionally, adding new features after devices are deployed uh, is a revenue generator and, and just an all-around good thing for device manufacturers to have. You see the graph on the right. This is a graph of defects that were uncovered in the Linux kernel. The orange bars represent 
uh, high severity bugs and the red bars represent critical bugs and the the length of the bar indicates the amount of time that that particular defect was in released kernel versions so and and obviously the kernel is just one component of a, any one of these systems so it's very important that you have the ability as much as possible to get these devices updated the update system obviously needs to be secure and the um the the update system needs to be robust secure and a, and as much as possible uh completely uh automated and, and requiring as little interaction from the end user as possible now we have a poll that i'd like to to put up now uh that uh that, that we'll leave up for about 15 seconds just to kind of get a feel for where our audience is. All right, very good. Uh, very interesting. Okay, so the proxy update uh, functionality is, uh, is a fair, fairly important feature. That's, that's very good information. Thank you so much. And so I mentioned earlier robustness. You see here, uh, this was the, the Fiat Chrysler was uh, recently in headlines, making headlines for uh, some issues with uh, with updates that they they rolled out to a number of their vehicles. Um, they they were not uh, users were not allowed to decline the update, and unfortunately, after the update was installed, there was. Um, a continual reboot issue with no easy way to roll back to the, the previous known good configuration. So from our perspective, uh, that's the, the, the primary definition of robustness is that the system is never allowed to get into a brick state. You never, you always have the ability to roll back to a known good configuration and the impact to the end user is minimal. And obviously security, uh, Tesla had some issues uh, a couple of years ago uh, where they were actually hacked by researchers due to lack of cryptographic validation of their firmware updates. They've since enabled cryptographic validation uh, on their the, the updates to their in-vehicle infotainment system, which has uh, mitigated a complete, the complete class of man-in-the-middle attacks, ensuring that the updates that are installed on the systems in their vehicles are uh, exactly the images that were provided by the, the, the software development teams responsible for the system. Now, talking a little bit more tactically here, uh, you see the, the kind of broad strokes view of the phases of the development life cycle. Um, and obviously, OTA updates should really be considered at the very start of the design. Uh, certainly some of it should be in the requirements and then the design of how the OTA system will be integrated and uh, what the, the, the user workflows will look like ideally should be considered very early in the design phase. Uh, in reality, that's usually added on very late in the game. And so that's part of the reason we're, we're, we're out actively doing these kind of uh, talks and, and, and panels and that kind of thing to help uh, push the message uh, and, and help help deliver the message to system developers that they really need to start thinking about this thing uh, early on in their system design, I should say. And uh, obviously, as we talked earlier, a, a roll your own approach can work, but uh, most of the system developers, their job is not developing an over the air update system. Uh, so it, it tends to be a last minute thought and slows things down and is not necessarily the, the most well-designed OTA update system. And on, on that note, you know, we, we want to empower the developers to focus on their core competence of building their application and they can leave the, the specific design of the OTA update system to us. Uh, our first offering about a year and a half, two years ago now, uh, was the end-to-end -end completely open source product. Uh, both, both components licensed under the Apache 2 license, all the APIs, the APIs, all the source codes are all available to, to others. Um, and now we have hosted Mender as well, which we'll, we'll dig into the specifics of that here in a bit. But uh, 
that that allows you to focus more even more on your device and leave the server side backend management scaling security and that kind of thing to us and now we have another poll we would like to do if we can pull that up now okay very good let's see where we are now Okay, interesting. Okay, so we do have some uh, Debian Ubuntu users uh, and, and a few uh, build root and other things. That's, that's good information. Thank you so much. So now we'll dig a little bit into the, the specifics of Mender. Uh, for those that have used Mender in the past, you've probably seen this slide before. Uh, and, and, I, and I mentioned earlier that robustness and security are our the, the, those are our two overriding objectives for everything we do. Uh, every design decision we make, uh, we analyze it on, on, on its impacts on the system's robustness and on the system's security. Uh, in terms of robustness, we mean that uh, the system is never able to get into a brick state. So we have an automated rollback uh, with fully redundant dual root file systems to ensure that if there is an issue with the update, we can always roll back to the previously known good configuration. Obviously, that takes extra uh, storage space, but these days, the amount of storage that's available typically on devices in the field that will be running the vendor system, uh, it's generally not considered too much of an imposition to need that extra storage space, and obviously, the uh, the, 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 the robust guarantees of having the fully redundant root file systems uh, is a very good feature to have. Um, uh, we want all atomic all updates to be atomic. That means that it's either completely installed or it's not installed at all, and that no portion of the system other than the update client itself would ever be aware of a partially installed update. The, these devices tend to be installed on systems with potentially uh, flaky network connections or dodgy power supplies. So there, there is potential for issues with installing these updates. But the, the nice thing is if the, with the client well designed, the end user application never needs to be aware of this. It all just happens in the background. And once the installation is complete and ready to go, the system is able to switch over to the newly installed update. Um, we do have custom integrity checks. Uh, the, the client itself will do standard checksum and cryptographic testing and that kind of thing uh, to make sure that everything looks good. The system developer can plug in custom checks that can do things like validate database entries or whatever specific checks are unique to your particular application. Additionally, we have device groupings to allow for controlled rollout management, including uh, campaign management and that kind of thing. Uh, and the, the downtime is actually minimized. With the fully redundant root file systems, we're able to actually stream the update directly to the passive partition without interrupting the end user of the device. So once the device, once the update is installed, then the device can be rebooted optionally controlled by the end user or just automatically rebooted depending on the, the use case of the device. As far as security, we use standard industry best practices. Uh, we use standard TLS between, for all communications between the server and the device. If the certificate of the server is a ca back certificate, that will be used to validate the certificate. If the server uh, is using a self-signed certificate, then the validation can take place completely on the target device with the certificates deployed to the devices. Uh, we also provide code signing at the image layer, which will allow you to decouple the infrastructure of distributing the updates from your CI system and provide a belt and suspenders approach to validating these images and, and eliminating man in the middle attacks. Vendor itself, uh, as mentioned, is a singular complete solution. Both the server and client are developed in tandem, uh, and it's, it's fully integrated and, and everything works very well together. You are able to update both the kernel and all the applications. Anything that goes on the root file system can be updated in the, in the system. Uh, our, when it, coupled with the backend server, we have fully managed updates, but our 
client can be invoked in a standalone mode on your device should you have a, a use case where perhaps network connectivity is non-existent or doesn't it only occurs very sporadically and you want to have some means to do updates with operators and, and USB keys, you can still get the robustness of the fully redundant root file systems by using our standalone deployment mode. Um, we do have a scripting application, a scripting interface that allows you as the system designer to plug in uh, various checks and updates at various uh, internal state transitions to control the internal flow of the vendor client. So for instance, if uh, your system is running on battery power and you want to delay downloading updates to uh, save battery, there is a, a scripting interface at the appropriate state transition to allow you to, to do that. If that level of customization is insufficient for your needs, you can go one level deeper at the API level. Both the client and server are all microservices based uh, and the APIs are published so that as long as you conform to the APIs of the existing system, you can plug in custom services on the server side, you can uh, implement custom functionality on the client side, uh, and it's all uh, through the API, which is documented on our website. And finally, the system overhead is very low. When an, when an update is installed, obviously that will take network bandwidth, but uh, the end user application is uh, minimally impacted by the, by the running of the vendor client. So moving on to some of the specifics of hosted Mender, uh, the, the, the biggest one from my perspective really is this allows you to focus uh, on getting your product released. You don't have to spend developer cycles uh, bringing up servers, figuring out how to manage scaling and, and, and deployment uh, on the, on the uh, internet side of things. The, the OTA management server is all handled for you. You, you are a subscriber to our, our host admender solution. All the server, all the, the security updates of the server back end are handled automatically. Latest security patches are, are installed in the back end, all, all with, with zero interaction from you. Uh, we have a full audit trail with uh, database access logs, APIs, uh, and, and everything is, is, fully, is fully logged and available. Um, and then obviously auto scaling. Uh, we, we have a, due to the microservices nature of our back end, uh, we have uh, horizontal scaling to, to handle whatever, uh, need, whatever the size of your device fleet. Now, uh, to go back to a little bit more tactical things for why we're here, the Tordex Easy Installer is, uh, is pre-installed when you acquire new chips from, uh, from Tordex. The, this allows you to graphically select which operating system you want to install on, on your board and is, is able to, to display over HDMI, v, VGA, or uh, parallel LCD uh, panels if you have those. Um, and additionally, the, the user interface is available over VNC. We'll see some of this here in a minute when we get into the demo. Um, and it's also suitable for your uh, manufacturing line with, uh, with fully automated, uh, no-touch installation of, of your custom images. So this, this makes it very easy to get that initial system image provisioned on the device and get you up and running quickly with, with the operating system, with the OTA update client embedded in it. So with that, we're gonna kind of jump into some of the mechanics of how to get this, uh, how to get your Toradex board up and running with a, with a Mender enabled Yocto image. So we have five steps to get you there. So the first step, go to hosted.mender.io and sign up for a, a free trial. Once you sign up, uh, you'll, you'll obviously create your login, uh, your login and password. That information will be emailed to you along with some help documentation uh, to, to get you up and start and, and running with the Mender system. As part of the setup, you will, you will be provided with a, an emulated device that, can, that, that, that will allow you to deploy updates but it's also ju just as easy to get uh, your Toradex board up and running. So follow the instructions provided by Toradex to get the system up and running into the easy installer. Uh, if, you, if you have a brand new board out of the box, as I mentioned, that this will be installed by default. If you have a board that has another image, uh, Toradex's instructions for uh, getting that system booted uh, over the, the USB client mode, 
are, are very easy to follow and very easy to get this system up and, and running in the Easy Installer. Step three, when you launch the Easy Installer, this is the, the GUI that you'll see. The top item here uh, is the Toradex and Mender embedded Linux demo. This is a Yocto Rocco based uh, build with the, the, the Sato GUI that we'll, we'll see here in a minute. Um, in the, the particular installation that I was doing here, you see that I'm actually installing from an, S, from an SD card, um, and I believe these images will be going live uh, on, on Toradex's system so that uh, at, at, at some point in the very near future, this image will be part of the uh, one of the network images that, that is available to you to install directly over the network. Once this installation completes, then the system boots and you will see this GUI actually on the display of the device. So this will show up either on the LCD panel or the VGA display. This demo will boot. Uh, and, and from here, you will log in with your hosted vendor login credentials. And that will then configure your board with your tenant token and the server URL for the hosted vendor server so that the vendor client running on the device is then able to connect to the, the hosted vendor server and your system will then be uh, fully OTA enabled. So just, just so we're clear, this is uh, all enabled through the standard Yocto build setup. Uh, the initial device provisioning uh, is available. Uh, that's obviously the Tordex Easy Installer. Uh, the images for Easy Installer are generated with, with standard Yocto builds. The hosted vendor configuration GUI is uh, also uh, part of Yocto and, and enabled through standard Yocto recipes and metadata. Uh, and as mentioned, you log in just with your standard hosted vendor credentials and everything gets configured for you. And then when you're ready to deploy updates, you use the standard vendor, work, standard vendor workflow, building, building your Yocto vendor artifacts, deploying them to the hosted vendor server and uh, triggering the deployments through the, the hosted vendor server. And with that, I think we can move into the demo. Okay, so for those that have seen Mender before, the hosted Mender dashboard is very similar to what uh, we have had previously. The dashboard is where you see all your devices in their various states, whether pending, pre-authorized, rejected, as well as device groupings. We also have the artifacts tab. I have my, my hosted vendor account loaded up with the, the release 2.0 that we're going to deploy over the air here in a minute. Uh, we have our deployments tab with uh, history of the deployments. And from here, we'll, we'll, we'll jump over We'll launch the Toradex Easy Installer with, uh, by following the standard instructions from Toradex. Uh, then we will launch a VNC viewer once the, the system has booted so that we'll actually be able to see the, 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 the user interface over the network. Uh, I've inserted the SD card into the board, selected the, the appropriate image, and now it's installing. So this takes... 30 or 40 seconds to install. And once that's complete, we will simply power off, uh, exit the VNC viewer and power the system back on. So this should be finishing up here in a minute, and then we will see the system reboot. And we've got both the serial console connected as well as the video uh, showing the actual LCD panel. Now our system is booting, running through the standard uh, Yakto boot up. You see the, the standard kernel messages. 
And now we see the, the, the standard Yocto bring up indicating that uh, this is running the image that we were expecting. And now we're back over at the, the hosted vendor login. I actually have a USB keyboard attached to the device that I'm using to enter, the, uh, enter my login credentials. And now my system is configured and it drops back to the standard SATO uh, GUI that's provided by Yocto. Now we can jump back over uh, to the, the serial console. We log in and use the journal CTL utility to take a look at the Mender logs. And you see that uh, we are still uh, generating the device keys. So once that completes and uh, the system reaches out to the, the Mender server. Now I have a device pending in my user interface. Since I'm expecting it, I'll go ahead and authorize the device to join my fleet. And then the device is gathering in inventory and providing it back to the Mender server. And now we can see that it is indeed a Calibri board running the hosted Mender 1.0 demo uh, image. Now we'll jump over to our deployments window. We did have the 2.0 version available. So we'll go ahead and select that version, select the group all devices in this case, and we will create the deployment. And you can see in the serial console window in the background, messages that are scrolling indicating that the image is, update, is installing. Our deployment progress window also shows uh, that uh, the image is now downloading to the device. This takes uh, about 90 seconds or so, and then the device will reboot. And while, uh, while this image is uh, installing, I will uh, point out again that uh, the, this is all happening in the background. Um, your application, your end users uh, can, can continue to interact with the device while this is happening um, out of the box without any additional configuration. Once the update completes, the device will automatically reboot. However, as I mentioned, we do have a plug-in architecture. Uh, if your device is a user interface-based device, that would be the, you would be essentially plug in a script at the post-install phase that would pop up a user interface element to ask the end user if now is a, a good time to reboot, similar to you know, what we've all seen on our, on our mobile devices and desktop systems. So now that the update has installed, we see the device rebooting. And when the device finishes booting here, we'll see that it goes straight to the Sato GUI and does not run the Mender login since that's already been configured. and take a look at the system logs. And once the time it has been synchronized for the certificate validation, the connection to the server will complete and the update will be reported as successful back to the server. And then we'll, we'll go back over to the UI and we should see the deployment move from the in progress to the completed state. And if we go back to our devices tab, we see that our device is now successfully updated to the hosted Mender 2.0 image. So if you want to set this up yourself, I, I have a couple uh, bit.ly links here. We'll post those in the chat. The first two links you see here on this page are the two different uh, Mender artifacts, release 2.0 and release 3.0 that you can use to test out the, the, the workflow. The uh, initial easy installer image should be available from the, the 
the, the Toradex servers soon. So once you launch the easy installer, you'll be able to do the initial provisioning and then grab these two, either one of these two artifacts for actually deploying over the air updates. And the third link there, which I'll bring up here in a minute, uh, is a, is a, a link to get to a GIST uh, on my GitHub account with scripts for building your own images if you want to start actually adding your own software uh, to, to the system. So I will, so this is, this is that link here. Just real quick, I, I'll, I'll walk through this so you, so you understand what, what's being done. This is obviously uh, intended really more as a getting started guide than, than, than anything that, that should be considered uh, production ready. Uh, there's two scripts in this link. One is checkout, which is obviously gonna be setting up all your source repositories. Um, for, for that, and I have one update that I'll be posting to this, but the, the link shouldn't change. Um, so you see here, this is just the, sit, the, the sequence of Git repositories that you'll need to check out in order to, to, to reproduce this build setup that we've done here. So uh, this is fairly straightforward. Uh, it assumes you're in a clean directory uh, with no contents in it, and or if you have a source directory already, it'll actually just update you to the very latest. Once you have run this checkout script, then we have our build script here, uh, and this is the, the sequence of commands and configuration steps to actually do the build. So in this case, uh, the, once we get past the bookkeeping at the top, you see um, we're running the uh, Yakko setup script here. Uh, we're running the bitbake layers command to add all the various Yakko layers that are necessary to reproduce this build environment. Um, then we are backing up uh, the, the default local.conf file. And then this is kind of the, the, the meat of this, uh, of this setup here, is that these are the settings you need in local.conf to fully enable uh, this exact build system that we have. And then we simply run bitbake uh, with the core image sato image. Uh, and depending on the, uh, the, the, the firepower of your build system, this build can take anywhere from one to three hours, uh, depending on the number of cores and uh, the amount of memory you have. So uh, I would encourage you, uh, if you're not familiar with Yakko, certainly uh, this is a, a quick way to get started. If you are familiar with Yakko, uh, all of this probably makes sense to you. Uh, and this will allow you to, to build up a system you can start adding different components in if you need to add some software and really start to check out the features of the, the, the Toradex Easy Installer and the Mender, uh, Mender Updater. And with that, uh, I've got the, this last slide here has uh, just some general links. I, I think uh, most, some of this has already been posted in the chat uh, and there's lots of contact information here. Um, so uh, we, we would love to hear from you. Uh, you can email me directly, my, my email address is there, or you can email the contact at mender.io, uh, that, that will go to myself as well as uh, uh, several of my colleagues. Uh, and if you have any questions about Mender or how to get started with Mender on, on the Toradex Calibri boards or hosted Mender or anything that we've discussed in this webinar, feel free to reach out. Uh, we certainly would love to hear from you and love to hear, uh, hear about how, how you might uh, use the Mender updater. Um, and with that, I'll hand it back to Brandon. Uh, I think we have uh, some Q&A. Yeah, thank you very much, uh, Drew, for the introduction to Mender. And as Drew mentioned, uh, we'll, we'll transition into the Q&A here. So we encourage you to um, write any questions you may have into the um, question dialog in GoToWebinar. And again, this um, another reminder that the recording for this video will be available at toradex.com slash webinars and on YouTube at the uh, Toradex channel. So please um, submit your questions. We'll get started with these right now. Um, so the first question um, for you, Drew, is uh, can you use uh, Mender with a BeagleBone green? Um, in theory, yes. We don't have out-of-the-box support for that platform. Uh, we, uh, the BeagleBone Black is one of our reference platforms. If you, when you sign up for a hosted Mender, uh, we provide images for that platform. 
Um, and my understanding is that it's supposed to be largely binary compatible, uh, although I can't say that we have uh, validated that. So uh, our image probably doesn't have all the driver support that, that would need to exercise all the hardware on that particular platform. Uh, and you know, since it is an open source project, if you are able to test it, we'd love to hear about your success with it. And uh, if there's any issues, please let us know and we'd be happy to take contributions for something like that. Okay, great. Uh, in a similar direction, there's a question of how easy it is to use Mender in the IMX6-based uh, platform. Uh, well, obviously, the, the, the demo uh, that we just showed was uh, the Mender running on the, the, the Calibri IMX7, uh, and that was a total of about seven or eight minutes to get up and started with that. So it's, uh, you know, when, when coupled with the easy installer, uh, and starting with the pre-built images, it's very, very easy to get up and running. Uh, obviously, uh, the Yakto side of things is a different story. Uh, you know, getting the, the getting the initial Yakto build up uh, and running for whatever IMX platform you have uh, does take some time. If you if you're familiar with Yakto, uh, it's it, it's pretty standard. The Yakto support for the IMX chipsets in general is very mature and robust. So whatever system you have to happen to be using should be fairly straightforward. Uh, and, and I know Tordex's system, you know, they have, they have a number of uh, uh, well-supported IMX chipsets. So uh, the, they should all be fairly easy to get up and running. Okay. And you mentioned permanent reboots in the car info system. Uh, do you have a built-in solution against such cases? Um, well, yes and no. Um, the, 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 the Mender system itself uh, is based on an explicit commit. So when an update is installed with Mender, the, the, the first boot into the update is considered conditional. So as long as the Mender client itself does not formally commit an update, uh, then on the next reboot, the system would roll back. So in the case of something that causes a continual reboot, as long as um, that, that reboot uh, interrupted the flow, uh, then the, the, the Mender rollback would be complete. Um, there are cases that, you know, for instance, if you install an update that has a kernel crash, uh, that happens before the Mender client is up and running, obviously the Mender client can't do anything about that, but without the explicit commit at that point, uh, then on the subsequent reboot, the logic in the bootloader would handle that rollback automatically. So we don't have anything in the client that explicitly detects these conditions, but it's you know, without that explicit commit, uh, it's kind of an implicit uh, handling of those kind of defects. And um, what about authentication for devices without a UI? Okay, so uh, yeah, generally speaking, uh, authenticating to the host admin system, uh, your tenant token can be provided as part of the Yocto build. Uh, so that is one of the Yocto variables, and that tenant token, which is available once you log into host admin, it's available through the help uh, help menu. Uh, it's just it's a uh, uh, it's a, a very long cryptographic string that can just be. Uh, added into your Yocto build as a Yocto variable, so then it will be deployed automatically. Okay, and we have a question. Any experience in um, integration with IoT platforms? I'm guessing this is a um, referring to other software IoT uh, uh, related platforms. Right. Yeah. So certainly IoT uh, is is a big driver of the need for OTA updates, uh, and and is a, a makes up a, a fairly large percentage of our customer base. Um, since everything in Mender on the server side is microservices and API based, uh, plugging into existing device management infrastructure is is fairly well supported. Um, obviously, uh, that that will generally require custom coding. Uh, and integration at the API level, but that 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 was part of the reason for the design of the back end the way it was to make it easy to plug into uh, the various uh, IoT device management infrastructure systems that are out there. Okay, and there's a question if um, there are any specific hardware requirements, uh, for example, a hardware watchdog to detect failed updates. Well, certainly a watchdog timer 
uh, is advisable. Uh, that's somewhat uh, orthogonal to the Mender system itself. Uh, that, that's very useful for detecting things like I mentioned a minute ago, like kernel crashes that uh, would render the Mender client unable to do anything since the kernel has crashed. So uh, I think that you know, if you're deploying a device in the field, uh, some kind of a hardware watchdog system is, is certainly something you would want to do. Uh, and that, that does work nicely with the, the Mender explicit commit model. Um, so that you know, on the on that initial reboot, if there is the kernel crash, uh, the the watchdog timer will detect that and automatically reboot the system. And without the explicit commit having been done by the mender, uh, the mender client, uh, the bootloader uh, will automatically roll back on the next system reboot, whether that's a, a watchdog trigger reboot or an end user manual reboot. Okay, and you showed the. Um... Uh, the GUI with the hosted mender in the presentation uh, is the same GUI provided with the self-hosted server solution? Um, not not explicitly. Uh, you can you can add a custom uh, server URL to that mender login GUI, uh, but the the self-hosted solution does not have a tenant token in the in the same way that the the hosted vendor does so the configuration for the self-hosted um there, there there's really two steps that would need to be done there one you need to ensure that the vendor the, the the url for your server gets uh injected into your device so you can actually do that through the the, the, the login gui um and then uh, if, if you are using a ca certificate authority backed server certificate that's the only thing you need to do. If your self-hosted server is uh, using a self-signed certificate, uh, then the other step is that you need to ensure that that certificate is installed on the actual client devices so that the, the TLS communication can be properly validated. And at, at, at present, the only way to do that is uh, at the Yocto build time. Okay, and, and and actually, before we go on, if that's something that's of interest to you, please reach out to us, uh, and and you know we we can certainly discuss adding that functionality. Uh, I'm not exactly sure how that would work, uh, since it is a certificate file, and and, and deploying a file uh, to a booted device, uh, we're not you know the, we would have to figure out exactly how best to do that in a secure fashion. And is it possible to select from the device a um, specific OTA image hosted on Mender? I guess it's from the device side. Uh, from the device side, no. Um, but uh, you know, again, everything is scriptable. Uh, so uh, the, the the APIs. Uh, for deployment management and everything, uh, th th those are all available. We have talked to, to some uh, potential users about how they might want to, to, to do some custom, uh, you know, deployment triggering and that kind of thing. Uh, so that's, it's not something that's exposed in the stock functionality, but uh, the, the API uh, is available there, uh, for, you know, for you to, to script up using Python or whatever uh, language of choice you might want to use. Okay, and um, Mender provide commercial services besides um, hosted Mender? Yes, we have a, a services team that can that, that can help with uh, you know whatever your your system development needs are. Uh, we tend primarily to focus obviously on Mender integrations, but uh, uh, in the IoT space, we have a lot of uh, newcomers to Yocto and uh, embedded Linux. Uh, so we do have a full services uh, embedded Linux uh, services team that can help you uh, with anything from you know full system bring up, uh, you know help it help you and your team getting started with Yocto, or if you already have a Yocto Yocto savvy team and just uh, want uh, help integrating uh, the Mender client to your particular platform, uh, we can do that if you need help. Uh, you know, implementing some of those custom uh, scripts that we discussed, or even implementing uh, custom uh, custom functionality via the the Mender server APIs, we we can also help with that. So, and that's where that contact at Mender.io email address comes in. If you have uh, uh, needs uh, for for custom coding through our services team, uh, feel free to reach out, and uh, we'd be happy to discuss it with you. 
Okay, and how are software updates created once uh, a board is on a uh, hosted Mender? Uh, so they're created just the same way they they, they would be with on-premise Mender. In, in the, uh, with everything we've shown today, that's obviously through Yocto. Um, that build script that I that I showed a little bit ago that's uh, available in the chat through the, the uh, bit.ly link to mender dash tordex dash build that walks you through doing a full Yocto build and the, and the output of the Yocto build is twofold. One is the uh, multiple partition image that's used by the easy installer uh, to do the initial device provisioning. Uh, but also produced as part of that build is the actual Mender artifact uh, that gets uploaded to the artifact tab of the hosted Mender server. Okay. Um, and one final question, is the easy installer primarily used for evaluation and testing or is the intention to use it for production as well? And that's probably a question I can, can say from the Toradex easy installer perspective, that it is um, usable in production uh, to provide, you know, um, uh, mass, uh, no touch uh, production installation of images. Um, but perhaps that's something you can uh, expand on from the Mender side of things. Um, the um, sort of production programming of, of Mender using an easy installer. Yeah, I mean, the, certainly uh, the, I, I think the question really is, is uh, you know, is it usable for development or manufacturing or both? And I think it's, it's definitely usable for both. Obviously, as a developer, it's very easy. It's a very easy way to get images installed on the board initially. Uh, for, for those that have been in the embedded uh, space for a while, you know that every time you touch a new piece of hardware, uh, the first a uh, number of hours is spent trying to figure out how to power the thing on and how how to get that initial program load into the system and uh, every every platform is going to be different uh, so having something easy like the Toradex easy installer very nice to have and makes the, the, the initial bring up of these platforms very very simple and very quick for for the development side once you move past the development and into the more manufacturing line, the fact that the easy installer is fully uh, fully scriptable and available for the no touch uh, installation, uh, that's obviously a, a, uh, a requirement for manufacturing lines. Certainly uh, when you're manufacturing devices at scale, you certainly don't want to have to power them all up uh, to come up to a GUI and have a, an operator go and trigger the installation. So the fact that it's all scriptable is uh, essentially a must have for the, the, the at scale manufacturing side of things. Okay, and can Mender be used with, uh, you know, you use the um, core image uh, Sato uh, recipe, but is can this be used with core image minimal? What are the required layers? Is um, this to be a requirement? Uh, certainly, uh, it can be used with other images. Our, we used Sato uh, specifically for the Toradex platforms uh, because of the easy installer and the fact that the GUI is already there uh, and that hosted login. Um, uh, application that we have, obviously, that's a GUI application. So that was the, the motivation uh, specifically in this case for using the Sato image. Our, our default reference image is a core image full uh, command line, uh, which obviously doesn't have the GUI. Uh, the, the actual requirements on the system are fairly minimal. Um, most of the requirements are on the build side and the bootloader. Uh, the, Golang, the, the Mender client itself is written in Golang. Yocto already has support for Golang built in to the standard Yocto layers. So generally speaking, you need the, 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 the Yocto, the Pocky layer, uh, and uh, you know any of the uh, meta open embedded layers that you might need if you need Python or anything like that. Um, and then uh, you'll need your meta, the, the Mender layers, which are available in our Meta Mender repository. Um, and uh, for the, the Torrid exports, obviously, there's uh, three or four layers that, that, that are needed for those, uh, the, the, free, the Meta Freescale as well as the Meta Torrid X uh, layers and that kind of thing. But uh, our goal is to keep the requirements on the, the, the system minimal. Um, as far as the actual impact on your design, uh, you know, in the runtime, uh, the Mender client and its configuration files are really the only things that are that are installed into your target root files system. They're fairly uh, low impact. 
Uh, the biggest, uh, uh, most uh, invasive thing that you'll notice, obviously, is is uh, the the multiple partition partition structure that's required for the redundant root file systems. Okay. And are there plans to make other Torrid XCD installer mender enabled images for um, other Torrid X devices? Um, we certainly can. Uh, I don't know that we have explicit plans to do so, but if you have specific needs for something, definitely reach out to us and let us know what, what platforms uh, are of interest. Uh, and you know, that, that will certainly help us prioritize the work. And um, just on that note, did I see that um, some patches were submitted for the um, uh, Tordex Easy Installer class, the BV class, to build the images um, from the build system? Um, right now, uh, we're building, I think we have custom recipes for it, but it looked like uh, at a first glance that uh, we were duplicating some of the work that's being done in the uh, standard Toradex recipes for the easy install integration. Uh, so that's one of the things uh, we'll, our, our development team will be looking at is how, how to reuse that. And then, you know, if we do find any, any issues, uh, obviously we'll submit that upstream. Uh, and then for those components of the integration that are specific to Mender, they'll be hosted in our Meta Mender layers. Okay, so that might be something that we will be able to support um, more devices um, providing Mender uh, with Toradex Easy Installer in the future. Um, is it planned to add BuildRoot as another supported build system? Um, yes, it is a. It, it, there's actually some uh, work in progress going on right now. Uh, one of my colleagues uh, recently submitted a number of fixes up to BuildRoot. Uh, to, to better enable uh, the build root integration with Mender. Um, so that's work in progress. Um, exactly what the product plans are with it, I, I, I can't say. I don't know that it, I don't know all the specifics, but uh, certainly if you're using build root, uh, take a look at some of the recent changes that have gone in. Um, and you know, I'm, similar to Yako, there, 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 there will always be an integration on the the build root side at the board layer to to make sure that the bootloader configuration and everything is is configured for the platform uh, that you happen to be using. Okay, well, um, we're out of questions and we are out of time. So thank you again, Drew, for the presentation today on Mender. Um, everybody can catch the recording of this webinar at toradex.com slash webinars, which will be available in a few days or on uh, YouTube in the Toradex channel. Feel free to reach out to us with any comments, questions, feedback, or anything else. Thanks again for joining the webinar, and we look forward to um, seeing you in future webinars from Toradex.